right, thanks Laura, and thanks uh, for all of you this afternoon. I know it's been a long day, day one of AWE. Hopefully everyone's excited still to be back in person. Uh, great to see a lot of friendly fans and faces out there. Um, you know, I've had a lot of, uh, as uh, Laura mentioned, I've, I've spent a lot of time in VR over the years, and um, one of the things I think that's really been compelling for me is like, how do we actually make a difference in VR? You know, what can we do as a mission? Um, and so I'm gonna talk about how VR can make our community safer and save lives. So just to give you some background, many people don't know who Axon is. Our brand really kind of isn't out there. But Axon is kind of the, the largest network of um, public safety solutions. And our mission is to protect life. So our founder and CEO, Rick Smith, uh, almost 30 years ago, two of his friends got shot and killed at a road rage incident. Um, and he was just confounded. He just thought, there's gotta be a better way. We can't continue to be killed by you know, centuries old technology. So he basically sought out the inventor of the taser, um, an engineer at the time, and commercialized that to, to be kind of be the, the less lethal option that we can use in our lives. He, thought, he, he went through many iterations, almost kind of bankrupted his parents, sold it to consumers at first, that failed, kind of found the niche of selling to law enforcement and public safety. And since then we've saved over 250,000, or not, we, but the company has saved over 250,000 lives uh, with less, less lethal uses of force. So our vision at Axon is to really to make the bullet obsolete. And specifically within VR, we're, lurking, we're the tip of the spear towards training de-escalation techniques and ways to mitigate uh, crisis situations. And it's really unfortunate, obviously, of the events of the past week with Uvalde, uh, the school shooting that just took you know, 19 young lives. Um, <clears throat> that could have been prevented. I mean, obviously there's lots of political views on this, but we've got to do a better job. We've got to start somewhere, and we've got to start, in my opinion, with how do we train for that? How do we train to react better? How do we prevent these from happening again? And VR just affords us that technology. So we are really kind of really excited about the opportunity here to use immersive tech to up-level um, our public safety officers to, to really kind of be higher performing and to make our communities ultimately safer. How many of you actually uh, know how law enforcement is trained today? Can you raise your hands? So this is a picture of one of our master instructor schools. Uh, we, we hold this, uh, this, this set of schools where we train the trainers multiple times a year. And this is the kind of training you go under where you're actually, the guy in the upper right corner holding the taser is faced with a scenario where you can see like this, you know, uh, set of a box, if you will, of uh, a room where a guy in a, a, they call it a halt, school, halt suit, looks like a gorilla suit, he comes out and, you know, enacts a scenario and can be somewhere where he's drunk or under the influence of drugs or threatening uh, himself or others with harm, and so the officer has to react, right? So that, and that is kind of state of the art in, in many ways um, because it actually puts you in a very high stress situation where you don't know what's going on and you gotta react in a split second notice to figure out whether or not you should protect someone's life or you should do, incapacitate somebody or have to use lethal force because your life is under jeopardy. So that's kind of really where we see the opportunity here. The problems with training today, uh, obviously resources in terms of time and money, there's just not, not enough time to train. In, in fact, in the state of North Carolina, uh, it requires about three times the amount of hours to train to be a barber than it does to be a police officer. So when you kind of put that into perspective, you're getting a much better haircut than an officer is learning how to be uh, someone who's protecting and serving. The other thing is uh, just mobility issues, right? So when you're actually thinking about police academies and training scenarios, you need to have infrastructure in place. You might need to have, you need to pull people off shifts. They might need to spend anywhere from one to five days. It's kind of a very uh, inefficient way of training um, where it just takes a lot of time scheduling infrastructure and resources overall. And also it's not necessarily the most effective way to train. So oftentimes you're still dealing with binders it's PowerPoint, you don't have the engagement of actually necessarily understanding and, and really kind of having to interact with the content you're learning. You're just kind of just taking it all in 
and you may have to play it back to some degree, but it's really kind of very mundane. And I think even uh, the agencies that don't have this level of training, think about kind of the large counties or rural states, um, it's really hard to, to really kind of get that level of training where it's at, at a significant level of quality. And then finally, when you do have agencies that do have the resources and the capacity to actually have training, you'll, you'll hire actors, they'll role play, it's somewhat limited, it's kind of similar to what you saw here, but it doesn't, it kind of just scratches the surface, especially on things like mental health and other issues that require situational awareness, being able to understand what it actually, what kind of situation you're facing with and how do you actually deal with it. So we know that actually training is really, really valued. It's actually something that officers themselves want to do. They want more innovative training and they really believe it's key to building trust in the community. And so we are really excited about Axon VR because again, as a company that actually makes body cams, tasers, and cloud systems to help be more effective for uh, our public safety officers, we, we feel this is a way to actually immerse uh, in not only skills training, de-escalation training, but also empathy. We also looked at the models of training and we kind of turned that paradigm upside down to figure out, hey, let's, let's actually take the VR training to the officers, not have them have to come to a police academy or have to travel an hour away to get this kind of training. So we decentralize it for use anytime, anywhere. We're building a content library, uh, really kind of you know, from scratch and also with partners out there. So if you're a content developer, happy to talk uh, before or after or after this session or you know, following it. Um, but we're looking for partners to help build this content library with us. And we've also um, really kind of joined forces with a cross-disciplinary network of uh, specialists, uh, first responders, community health experts, uh, mental health experts. We wanted to make sure that it's a very holistic and balanced view of how we actually train. Because uh, to be honest, you know, training across all the agencies today is very fragmented. There's no one homogenous set of rules. And so we need to make sure what we do offer and deliver as training can be accepted by the multitude of agencies out there and can fit within their policies. So really, kind of the crux of, it, crux of it is that we are the premier solution for developing higher performing officers that can actually engage with critical thinking skills. Um, we all know VR is great for immersion. AR will be coming too. I mean, it already is here, but we're focused on VR for now with kind of a, an eye towards the future for AR. Um, but you know, linking this in with our ecosystem of what we're trying to do, and we'll be talking more about this uh, as a company more publicly in response to the Uvalde shootings uh, sometime soon, but this will be a key component of it. It's how do we actually prepare officers better to be able to respond? So just some basic statistics. So we kind of really leverage uh, crisis intervention specialists, uh, law enforcement trainers, patrol officers. We need to get that full gamut of perspectives of how we actually build the content. So we are not doing this in a vacuum. Everything's about the voice of the customer. We spend hundreds of hours of expert research to ensure that the validity and, and authenticity of the content is true to life. We always have, for our 360 video productions, we always have law enforcement officers on set to validate exactly what we're doing here. And we already have 1,100 agencies using our Axon VR training. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, we are not only one side on the law enforcement. We need to balance that with community expert advice, mental health crisis experts, uh, and healthcare officials. And so the way we are approaching this is, is really kind of the adult learning model. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know, you know about this, but it's a tell, show, do model. Uh, so if you think about when you're learning to be a doctor, right, you go to medical school, everything's kind of told to you in, in lecture format, so that's a tell piece. You start seeing that as you are going through your third and fourth year of medical school when you're making rounds, and so that's, you're shown exactly what you've been learning from a theoretical standpoint, and then as you go into residency, you're actually starting to do those procedures, you're actually doing it, uh, and once you master those skills, then you apply. So we follow a very similar approach to how we approach law enforcement training and public safety training here. And so we actually have a three-pronged product solution where our Axon Academy is our web-based training that gives you that supplemental information. That's our tell piece. We have something that's launched two years ago, or three years ago actually, called community engagement training that shows you the scenarios in 360 video and you actually have an ability to make some choices in a branch narrative format. And then now we, just last week we launched uh, simulator training. We're actually practicing 
enabling development of skills, learning about how to de-escalate situations uh, in full six degrees of freedom, and that's our due. So Academy, I mentioned, this is really kind of our supplemental uh, e-library of content that we use to kind of support uh, our other modules, but it also stores our after-action report following um, the lesson. So as you kind of go through a VR, there is an after-action report. Essentially, it's a, it's a way for instructors and trainers to kind of mark and assess your performance. They can make annotations. They can capture the whole video of it. It's a way to store it as well and provide you opportunities for development and growth. And that's kind of a, you know, essentially some slides of how it looks like, uh, in this case, for learning about the signs of domestic violence. How do you detect that? How do you communicate with the subjects uh, in that domestic violence situation as you determine that that's the case? Then we have uh, what I mentioned we launched back in 2019, which is our community engagement training. So these are focusing on situational awareness, understanding, again, how to uh, react to a scenario, how to make some you know, limited choices um, to de-escalate, and you learn about different types of phenomena. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a preview of what uh, it would look like. Uh, with our, we have a, over a dozen different experiences right now. Um, these are stereoscopic as well, and we're kind of growing this content library uh, every few months. But the unique part of it is we actually showcase both the officer perspective as well as the citizen or subject perspective. So again, this puts you literally in, in the feet or shoes of someone who's being approached by the officer to understand and build that empathy towards what he or she is doing here. In this case, this is a hard of hearing scenario where you're first kind of put in the situation where as a driver who's hard of hearing. So we actually um, adjust the audio to almost mimic what it would be like, which is obviously very hard to hear. Uh, we actually took, we use experts to really inform us the actress herself is hard of hearing. So oftentimes uh, people with hard of hearing are looking to lip read. And in this case, the officers, the way he's positioned in the sun, it makes it very difficult for her to actually understand and see what he's saying. Um, so it, again, it puts you both in that position perspective of uh, both the citizen and the officer to figure out, like, how do you respond directly? And you can make, obviously, the wrong choices and understand why and, and go through it again. And then again, this is kind of the list of different um, things we have. And a lot of this is obviously driven by uh, our customers out there. So pure intervention was prompted by the George Floyd uh, murder, right? So how do you actually, as an officer, recognize another peer acting inappropriately and what do you do to intervene? Uh, we also focus even on things like wellness. So the officer in crisis is something where understanding the fact that you know, uh, police officers actually have a very, very high suicide rate. So how do you detect that among your, your officers as well and how do we address those um, as they come forth? So the do part of it I mentioned was our VR simulator training. We just actually announced this uh, launch of this last week uh, with great uh, reception to it, so I'm going to play a little video clip so you can understand what it looks like here. So obviously that's you know a, a simulation here, but it kind of shows you, in effect, what we're trying to do is, is bring the scenarios to you to train it under stress and figure out how to make those proper decisions. Now, one of the things that certainly we recognize and that we're training for is that 99% of officer-involved incidents do not use use of force. So we're training on that with our community engagement training, as well as the fact that when we put those, as we add those modules into uh, simulator training, you're going to be faced with those situations where you know, you learn how to de-escalate with voice, but we also realize that, as with everything, you have to have um, use of your weapon. So 
We're, there are two components of our simulator training. There's the content piece of it, where we're launching with a firing range basic. This is just basic fundamentals on how to learn, how to use a taser, right? The taser is not a gun. The taser deploys two probes, two darts out of your device that have to have a certain amount of spread as they connect with someone's skin, right? So, and, and there's different ways to do it. You need to manage the distance, you need to manage the spread, you need to make sure that it's not gonna be something that could potentially harm uh, the subject. And this is very, something that's under-trained in the law enforcement community, I would say. Um, you know, there's a lot of firing ranges that are out there where people are using their sword arms, but with Taser, not so much. So we, we put together our initial models around skills so that they can understand how to use a Taser, they can feel comfortable with it, because we know that, you know, with VR, about 275% of the time, or you get 275% more confidence learning in VR than you would in, in traditional forms of, of other type of learning, and, and you're actually doing it. So we, we train true to life where we actually have the hardware uh, we're using the HTC Vive Focus 3 as our headset. Uh, we helped co-develop the wrist trackers that you see. Um, so everything you see on the right side, which is the hardware piece, except for the, the, um, uh, the pavers, those are not included. But uh, you, know, you get the tablet, you get the wrist trackers, uh, the headset, and we are including the, the, not the taser itself, but a VR-enabled cartridge. So you, Officers would use their own taser. Right? We want to train true to life with their real equipment because to introduce, like, say, a fake taser, a 3D printed taser, or a 3D printed firearm, there's differences in weight and distribution. If you were to do like PC tracking uh, with VR, you need to put the you know the tracker on there that affects the, the feel and the weight distribution. So everything needs to fit in your holster correctly so that you know it becomes muscle memory automatically. And so we've enabled the VR. Um, uh, cartridge, which is the white item on the bottom right, to fit in your real taser, flip it on, it turns into VR mode, and you put on the headset and you're, you're, you're good to go. Um, the intermediate range here that you see is uh, something that's, you, know, you might think, oh, this is not that revolutionary because you have moving targets coming towards you. It's really not a decision-making drill at this point, it's a targeting drill, because again, you need to be, be able to kind of aim at someone and, and deploy your taser very quickly under, you know, with, with very little um, time delay, right? Otherwise, you know, you could actually be injured or, or killed. Um, so this is actually something where at our last master instructor school uh, two weeks ago, I asked about 400 trainers, how many of you trained your, train, your trainees with moving targets coming at you and not a soul raise their hand, right? So that just shows uh, the opportunity I mean, it shows the deficit, but it shows the opportunity where VR can make that difference here. Uh, and then lastly, what we're gonna be, what we're working on right now is also you know, the first application where we're kind of scaffolding on the skills and performance of taser training onto domestic violence. So how actually now you're faced with a domestic violence call, just like you saw in the video, what do you do? You knock on the door, how do you announce yourself? It's fully interactable with the trainer who's using the tablet that you see in the right, and the trainer can control the dialogue, they control the actions of the NPCs, as the trainee goes through that, that experience. And then finally, like I mentioned, the tablet itself has these after action reports where you can annotate notes, you can actually look at learning objectives, you can mark them good, better, best, needs improvement, uh, and it records the video of what you've actually just done so that they can be uh, looked at either right afterwards or for later review asynchronously. Um, and that kind of ties back into Academy. So you kind of see our teleshow do Everything kind of from the do side ties back into Academy as your training record, so you can have that transcript to look back at. Historically, you can look at it to see areas of improvement. You can actually focus on the deficiencies and, or areas where you, know, you need to build more skills at going forward. So I, you know, I think really uh, in light of what last week's events were, and I believe there was another mass shooting today, uh, the woman in front had just informed me, which is really tragic. But you know, we're trying to challenge, tackle these really tough challenges, and um, we're not gonna shy away from that. We really believe that VR can save lives, can make all our communities safer. So thank you for your time, and you know, we hope to make some kind of a dent in um, the tragedy that we have today. We have a couple, um, we have a couple minutes for Q&A here, so we have one or two questions.
Hey, Chris, I think you started to allude to this, but I'm curious whether Axon makes available data on efficacy of training, like the difference between doing that sort of, you know, in-person versus VR, and what kind of results uh, can be shared with the public? Yeah, so we, it's a great question. Um, you know, so we actually did a study with the National League of Cities um, and Phoenix PD back in November, and they released a report saying that those people who, we had about 100 officers go through community engagement training, and about 81 plus percent found it was very helpful and actually helped them adjust how they dealt with the scenario at hand in real life. So we know that it works. We know it's impactful. Training Simulator just came out last week, so we don't have the data on that yet, but we're obviously looking to understand what is that impact, because ultimately, if we don't have that data, it's really hard to assess. But, so we're talking to academic institutions, uh, researchers around that, but we really feel the data is going to be underlying and, and key to be able to kind of prove out the efficacies of VR. And we know, I think, as an industry as a whole, based on other studies, that you, know, you learn better, you retain better, you're actually building that muscle memory. We want to kind of uh, also show the outcomes uh, from it as well. Oh, hey, Chris. Uh, nice presentation. Lot to learn. I, I'm founder of uh, XR Safety Initiative, and always curious about what do you do with all that data, and uh, how for how long do you retain it, and you know all the context of uh, who all have access to it since you're working with Vive, and a bunch of other probably third parties. So. I'm sure these are like tough questions, but uh, do you make those transparency things uh, available for people or someone like me who's just curious? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So uh, the fact that we partnered with HTC has nothing to do with the fact that I came from HTC that was independent, but um, HTC obviously doesn't really capture that data, doesn't track that data, and that's very, very important for us and for our customers. So we don't actually track uh, that that level of data. What we do track is, like I said, kind of the performance data that's tracked in the after action report, and that's actually owned by the agency themselves, so they can decide whether or not they want that data or not. Um, we don't actually own any of that data at all, so we are kind of agnostic on that. You know, at some level, at, we'll, we want to be able to kind of understand the efficacy, so we'll have to kind of figure out how we leverage that data in a more aggregated manner, but we don't really actually uh, own any of that, the data, it's really um, the customers. Great, thanks very much.